Hello everybody, this is B-Bake from Baker Brothers and Revelations Primo. So, as I said before in my other reviews, I think the 80s were really starting to be a downfall in the quality of Ralph Bashke's works, because none of them had the same charm as they did in the 70s, but I really don't think anything could be as bad as Hey Good Looking. To me, Fire and Ice falls somewhere in the middle. It has a little going for it and a lot holding it back, but it's not really that offensive or anything like that. It's just kind of bland. Now, this was a collaboration between Bashke and his longtime friend, Frank Frazetta, who's most famous for doing fantasy posters for movies and other fantasy illustrations. Now, the reason why I find this sort of bland is that the story just doesn't seem to really grasp my attention. It's basically about two kingdoms that are fighting each other. The Ice Kingdom, which is evil, Fire Kingdom, that is good. And this is something that I kind of find funny because usually fire represents power and corruption and something like ice represents water, which is, you know, good natured and spirit. But here they kind of reversed it, which is probably the only thing I find inspired about this movie. And, but what makes it more uninspired are the characters. I really don't see much interest in these characters. Larn is just your typical by the numbers fantasy hero and our villain Necron is not really that impressive either. He's just a snarky wizard. The only thing that I like about him is that he makes people stab themselves. Like That's pretty cool. The only other two characters I kind of have an interest in is Dark Wolf because, well, I mean, look at him. He's so badass and he's awesome at fighting. And, of course, Tigra because, well, let's face it, she's in that skimpy bikini the whole movie. Enough said. Enough said. There's not really much else to talk about this movie. I mean, if I talk about the plot, it won't really be anything for that long because it's just too boring it's not as ambitious as lord of the rings or as creative as wizards and it's not even as well rotoscoped as american pop but it's kind of fun to watch i mean some of the scenes here i think are cool when there's not a lot of dialogue going on and i think the sceneries look pretty cool but as i said there's just not too much to the imagination and i think that all has to do with this movie being in the middle of what was the sword and sorcery boom in the 1980s you know movies like conan the barbarian and Red Sonia, so it just kind of comes off like a cheap knockoff. But it has a cult following. In fact, Roger Rodriguez really likes this movie and is planning on making a remake, but I really don't see the point. I think there are other Bashki films that are much more inspiring, and a live-action remake to me just doesn't sound like a good idea. In fact, Bashki doesn't want really any part of that, because he didn't really put a lot of effort into this movie anyway, as he said in some interviews. He was really tired at this point and really didn't care much, and it kind of shows. So, I guess in honor of Bashki's lackluster movie, I give you a lackluster review. 2.5 out of 5. Not its best, but it has some cool images. All matter in our world is from the natural bases, which are earth, air, fire, and water. Holy shit, like Avatar. The Last Airbender. Okay, I'm sorry about that.